Before we get into Laura, let's let's just provide some background. So there's currently $1.7 trillion in student loan debt across the U.S. held by some 40 million Americans. Democratic lawmakers have been advising Biden to cancel student debt, and dozens of Congress members are saying that he should use his executive powers to eliminate at least $50,000 in debt per borrower. Biden's been a little bit cooler than that, saying that it'd be closer to 10K per borrower. The moratorium on student loan payments expires uh, August 31st, and Biden has stated that he will either extend the moratorium or do some sort of debt cancellation before that date. Now, Laura Ingram decided to tweet about this Thursday morning, and her tweet reads, my mom worked as a waitress until she was 73 to pay for our, our college, even helped with loan repayment. Loan forgiveness is just another insult to those who play by the rules. So I'm curious, does Laura Ingram's tweet make a stronger argument for student loan forgiveness rather than against it? Good question. Let's start with Lizzie again. You know, um, I don't think she, as is the case with most of her declarations, I don't think she really thought this through the way she presented it. Um, one, just to give some backstory for her, um, you know, Laura Ingram is one of four kids. They're all kind of close in proximity to age. So in looking at doing research on her and this issue, her mom worked until she was uh, 73 in 1994, and then she died in 1995. Her mom said, you know, that she, for all of the kids, was working to help, you know, pay off the student loan debt. What Laura didn't realize is that in using her mom as an example, <laughs> she was saying, this is the reason why we need student loan forgiveness. Parents should not be working into the golden years to help pay off debt for their children. And a lot of times, I don't think what a lot of people know, I don't know what the loan, student loan situation is like in Canada, Rob, but a lot of times when you fill out a FAFSA, that's the form, um, to apply for financial aid. You can apply for loans as a student, but also your parents can take out a loan on their behalf. And mm -hmm. so that's what a lot of parents do. They take out the parent, the parent portion of the loan and they are responsible for that. Now, granted, if you make a whole bunch of money, you could give your parents money to pay that off, mm -hmm. but it goes on their parents' credit report. And so I think, you know, Laura, gave credence to Biden's argument. We don't want old did. folks who have retired to still be, who should have retired mm -hmm. at 73. And she was working as a waitress. You know, yeah. that's not always fun for a 73 year old woman. So I think once again, Miss Laura put her foot in her mouth and didn't really think about the statement that she was making. Yeah, she got a lot of blowback on Twitter. So for example, one, one tweet, says, do you hate your own mother? This is from Dave Zirin. Do you hate your mother so much you want others to What's suffer as she suffered? And then... What's up, Dave? Dave <laughs> works at The Nation. Dave has been um, a speaker for my classes at the School of the New York Times. What's up, Dave? Oh, you know Dave. Okay. Oh. I know Dave. Cool. All right. Brittany Nupper says, happy Mother's Day. May we all work our moms into the grave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Horrible. Horrible. I mean, <laughs> then... Uh, Aaron Menke says the rules shouldn't include working into your 70s to pay for a child's tuition. That's dumb and broken and not at all normal. Maybe we should stop shaming people who are buried under debt from a corrupt system. Instead, reform the system that buried them. Mm -hmm. Mario, what are your thoughts? I are you working to 73, Mario? Are you going to work kids? to 73, 75? Yeah. Yeah. For student no. debt. Just for student <laughs> debt. <laughs> I, you know, I like. I think the num the amount of things that came out like for me, one, her privilege in many ways. Even mm -hmm. though her mother was paying off this debt, I think the privilege to be able to be like, it's just playing by the rules. First of all, the rules don't work for everyone clearly, and the system was designed to get the results it gets, which is an economic debt for for people who are struggling to create the barriers to actually getting higher education. Like that's mm -hmm. the big picture here that she's trying to say is not the thing, right? Um, and I think, yeah, her argument, like to answer your question, Rob, for sure, her argument was not, was was entirely against what she was trying to actually say, right? Like she 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 walked into it and um and it's a ridiculous thing. It's a ridiculous thing to imagine that we want. Like, no, I do not want to be working until my 70s to pay off the loans of my children. And 
and it's it's ridiculous yeah the whole thing and i was just thinking like even just the idea that like this country and this goes back to like it's all economic right it's really all about the money mm -hmm. and and who gets the money and the power from the money and who controls opportunities and access for people but like in other countries U.S. is probably, and I don't know all the research, I don't know if any of you know more, but like our country is the only one that has this massive amount of student debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this massive amount, There's yes. There's got to be some kind of system that we need to examine to understand why that is such a big thing in how we mm -hmm. actually educate our students, our kids. It, 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 it's, it's education, it's like learning. It's massive amount of student debt as a result of massive amounts of tuition. We pay mm -hmm. an absorbent amount of money to go to school. When I lived in Finland, to go to university, you maybe pay a thousand dollars a year, maybe. But Liz, Liz, you have to stop and look at taxation. I know that U.S. residents are vehemently opposed to taxation and then cry about services that they need to pay no. for. If you look at Scandinavian countries who are taxed at almost forty to fifty percent. But if you don't have to worry about saving for education, if you don't have to worry about saving for retirement, if you don't have to save for health care, you lead a stress-free life because you know that you are taken care of by the system that you have contributed into your entire life. It's this individualist, of... individualistic nature in the U.S. that's so toxic. I hate it. Mm -hmm. but, taxes aren't pay but taxes aren't paying for private school education. That's the thing. It may, taxes might pay for state university, but the $75,000 a year tuition at Harvard is not be, being paid by Massachusetts state taxes. So again, it's one of those things where we are overcharging people to get an education. Yeah. We are overcharging people. And you're making the point I was going to make, Lizzie, and it was... um. This guy, Kasim Rashid, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. You graduated from Dartmouth in 1985 when tuition was $10,000 a year. Now it's $61,000 a year. The insult is changing the rules to bail out billionaires to the tune of $10 trillion, but stiffing working people with predatory tuition and interest, socialism for the rich bootstraps for us. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Also, think about this. Laura, Ingr Laura Ingraham is worth $75 million at this point today, right? Her kids will never have to worry about student loan debt. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. So it's easy for her to take this argument, to take this position, reflecting on her poor 70-year-old tired mother working as a waitress to pay for her student loan debt and her student loan debt. Rob, I think Her you kids had... will never have to face that. Did you get, did you just say everything you need to say, Rob? I just have one quick thing that I wanted to add on. It as I was researching it, one of the more noticeable impacts of widespread loan forgiveness would be to impact the racial wealth gap because black undergrads are more likely than any other racial group to have borrowed money to pay for college. Yes. So you know I yeah, it doesn't cool. surprise me that this is calling from Laura Ingraham and Fox. It mm -hmm. really doesn't surprise me because. And, and, go ahead, Maria. No, sorry, Robin. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, go ahead, Maria. Go ahead. No, but I was thinking, I mean, like, that's the thing. I think that, like, it's not just private schools, though. It's even state. Like, if you have to still pay, I mean, 25000 is a lot of money a year for for people who are single parents or, you know, like, I mean, like those are it, like, it doesn't, you don't have to just be spending 60,000 to be in debt at the end of school, right? Mm -hmm. Like even our state tuition is very expensive and difficult for people. Community colleges cost money. Community well, college, I, like my son is right now in that situation with community college, right? Everything costs money. And, and I think it goes back to Lizzie, what you're saying is that like the, the, the system that's broken is that, and it goes back to what you said too, Rob, is that like what it is, is it the tuition is our gatekeeper. And only people who are able to access that ability, even to get the loan, right, is yep. are the ones that have that ability to access it and then not be in debt for the rest of your life. So like, you know, you're, you're I mean, how many adults are still paying off their student loans? Uh, Listen, when I, I don't know when I paid off aren't, my, actually. I'm not. I paid well, off. I, I'm not actually. A few years ago, I'm not done. I cried. I cried when I figured out because I, I, you know, I have two undergrad degrees and a master's degree. That's a lot of money. Um, and for the state, 
another thing to consider for state universities, there's in-state tuition and out-of-state tuition. And out-of-state tuition is almost triple, actually more than triple in a lot of cases of what in-state tuition is. And so when I was at University of Colorado, in-state tuition, I think for Colorado residents was like $6,000 or something like that for the whole year, both fall and spring semester. Out-of-state tuition was 25 plus each semester. And that was back in 1993. And so again, it's, it's a burden. It's one of the first debts that 18, 19 year olds will ever have. Mm -hmm. And then to yeah. graduate with that debt and, and not necessarily have a job that's gonna help you pay it off, yeah. it's awful. Mm -hmm. it's awful. All right, we're out of time on this. So and then um, your credit scores, like it's just, it's a role. It's, it's, a, a, it's a whole average. All right. So Mike Winter says a perfect response on Twitter. Um, and she could have done like Tucker and marry rich and go go to a mediocre school. Jacqueline Robinson, Lori Ingram's uh, argument is not the own is not the only is not the own she thinks it is. It's not her elderly mama's responsibility to pay off an adult child student loans by toiling away in their golden years, especially when you said grown kids are gainfully employed. Uh, Daria Winters says that uh, we should restructure how much the schools can charge. Uh, Jackie uh. Robinson says uh, some of the parents we represent uh, pay college level tuition for just Montessori and grade schools. Yeah, Other countries invest in the education of their children and attend excellent mm -hmm. public institutions. Can I just I, add one more point? I know we're quick, almost out of time, but quick, in, quick. Terms of, in terms of tuition and what students are paying, that money is not funneling down to the professor. As a former professor at Howard University, where you know tuition is several thousand dollars a year, I didn't get any of that money. Mm -hmm. no. A lot of a lot of professors, if you're not tenure, you're making shekels. Mm. You're making shekels on the dollar. Ade Boyega says uh, this is Laura Ingram's. Uh, this is Laura, Laura Ingram. We're talking about here. It's part of her brand to be off base. Privilege is what she's about. Ajani says the elites being out of touch with reality. Um, I promise you, I'm not paying no loans. I don't. Uh, I don't see college should be free. Um, and then Daria Winter says uh, yes, we should look at Ted's. We should look at Ted Cruz graduating from where. <laughs> uh -uh. Oh, and uh, Gianni says you're smart, Rob. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So is this truth, lies, shenanigans? Truth, man. Yes, shenanigans. Yes, man. Nonsense. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. I, I don't bullshit. have a bullshit nice, one. Rob. This is, nice, this is all shenanigans today. Oh, and then I'm going with that. I love that one, Rob. <laughs> Rob, you don't have Rob to... B, if you guys, for those on our podcast, Rob B actually drew <laughs> a bull <laughs> taking a shit. Kidding. Swapping. I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna get a picture of a cow pie next time, Rob. I think I'm a, 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 a cow pie. <laughs>